On the eve of one of the biggest releases on Wii U, we're taking a look back at a time when Mario Kart wasn't the only game in town. While well, the practice of ballooning your character's head so that they'll be recognizable while sticking out of a giant go-kart was once as prevalent as Flappy Bird clones, Mario Kart is the genre to itself, just as it did in 1992. Yes, yes, we all know Crash Bandicoot, Mortal Kombat, and a zillion other franchises got their own bobble-headed racer, but those were little more than simple offshoots within a single franchise. What separates Mario Kart and the entries in this here video is that these kart games feature an ensemble of characters from a single company, an all-star, series-spanning cast brought together in the name of cannon-shattering, medium-velocity shits and giggles. So let's start with the absolute worst! Number 5 Every major console company needs an all-star kart racer, right? It's 1993, after all, they said from across a pile of slap bracelets and Jurassic Park action figures. You're right, and wrong, if you're Atari Karts. Yes, Atari fucking Karts. Which would have you believe is chock full of a who's who roster of prehistoric gaming celebrities. It is not. The only confirmed, real, pre-existing game character represented here. Oh, why am I telling you guys? You already know. It's Bentley Bear! The star of Crystal Castles? Hello? Hello? Is this thing on? Seriously, every goddamn ridiculous character may be an allusion to some ancient Atari game of yore, hinting at classics like Firebug or Skull and Crossbones. The titles of the racetracks are the only evidence you have to reassure you and your idiotic decision to purchase a Jaguar that this is an ensemble Atari game and it's a name only. For example, this is the Tempest racetrack. And for you younglings out there, this is Tempest. I'll leave it to you old farts to point out the genuine Atari references I may be missing here. That's what comments are for. But it wouldn't make the game any less abysmal with 20 years of hindsight. If I had to guess, the names was affixed to the game long after some well-meaning developer had a quiet cart game failure and the Jaguar decided it needed every possible reason to be mistaken for a Nintendo product. Jaguar! 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 Number four. While dorks today practically expect their favorite characters under the same company umbrella to cross over with one another, the Nicktoons did very little intermingling outside of crudely matted Nickelodeon promos. But sometime around the turn of the century, Nickelodeon finally compiled every one of its beloved Nicktoon characters together from all the way back to their 1992 debut. Save maybe for Doug, who may have already made the jump to Disney by that point. Very expensive. Holy shit! Every goddamn Nicktoon! Wow, look at all these characters! Tommy, Pickle, you Spongebobs! That they're angry beavers. And holy shit, Ren and Stimpy making their last appearance in any goddamn game up until somewhat recently. Ah, such a lovely slice of 90s animated nostalgia. Too bad the trip down memory lane is a terrible fucking drive. With all the licensed love floating around, the non-animated gameplay portions of Nicktoons Racers loosely resembles what would happen if an astronaut threw a couple of handfuls of polygons in the air and let them float around. A playable Dire Straits video this game, with a couple of crude shapes you could mistake for 90s cartoon characters. The announcer's annoying, the level designs are ugly as they are few, and the weapons are fucking hack. And yes, Plankton's the mystery writer. There, I spoiled it for you. Number three. Far be it for Square to ignore a potential pile of money in any genre, Final Fantasy fans received their own mascot racer in 1999. Although, perhaps not with the cast they were expecting, but with a nameless bird getting top billing and a supporting roster of nameless tertiary Final Fantasy stars like Goblin, Golem, and okay, a Mog and a Black Mage. This is very much Chocobo's game. Hooray! And in addition to the remix theme you're hearing, there's also a sickeningly sweet storybook mode starring the little big bird narrated by Sid. However, it's in that very story mode you'll unlock a roster of drivable characters most of you probably wished were available from the get-go. That's right, Square made you work for Chocobo Racing's fan service, and you'd have to beat the story mode up to 10 times to unlock playable characters like Cloud, Squall, Sid's Tank, Aya's fucking car, the agonizingly slow Cactar, and lastly, for you classic FF fans, an original Chocobo in a ridiculously fast 8-bit airship. The game's about as weird as you'd expect for something from Japan in a spin-off with no real expectations, and reasonably difficult given it's safe for preschool presentation. All the tracks and songs are clever plays on everything from the FF series up to that point, so I guess that's something. Number two. Oh, Konami. You know we love you. Part of you, anyway. The part that made more than Metal Gear is the occasional Castlevania title, and certainly not the company that produced more Glee games than Contra games in the last generation. But I suppose you can't fault Konami here for trying, as it rather brazenly created an ensemble Mario Kart knockoff starring its most famous characters. You know what? No. The craziest thing about Konami Crazy Racers are the characters chosen to star in the game. 
This game launched with a Game Boy Advance in June of 2001, and it remains pretty charming and playable in a dated, why do you still have a GBA kind of way. But at that point, characters like Simon Belmont, Solid Snake, Frogger, and the fellows from Contra were hardly what you'd call distant memories. Yet sadly, if you weren't Japanese or a diehard arcade buff, you're probably scratching your head over damn near every character included in the roster. Sure, you've got Dracula from Castlevania here, but he's hardly what you'd call recognizable, let alone in an ultra cute chibi form. Ah, but this guy I know. Mao Moi? Yeah, that's him. Only hardcore weeaboos with an undying affection for Goemon will get anybody in this game, because characters from series like Power Pros and Pop and Music hadn't even been stateside at the time, and they're mostly what's here. If that weren't bizarre enough, Konami somewhat quietly released a sequel on iOS in 2009 featuring Sparkster, somebody from the timeless and not at all forgotten Rumble Roses, and fucking Pyramid Head from Silent Hill. Love you, Konami. Rumor has it that Sonic the Hedgehog is a fast dude, so it was probably inevitable at some point he would cross paths with a kart racer. However, it didn't happen exactly how you'd think. There's the Sonic Drift series for Game Gear, but they're really more like crude rad racers with stupid power-ups, and if you honestly have any love for any game in this series, it was probably the only game you ever owned or you're desperately in need of counseling. Sonic would also dabble in karty games, like the on-foot Sonic R, and the irritatingly ubiquitous Sonic Rider series, but it took Sega almost two decades to nut up and blatantly steal the Mario Kart formula with Sega All-Star Racing, long after any other developer had given up on the genre completely. Thank God they did, because it's actually pretty fucking great. Better than Mario Kart Wii, it's contemporary at the time, and it does that by doing Mario Kart better. For some reason, Smash Brothers gets to be the overwhelming chalice of Nintendo-related fan service. There's no other characters from outside the Mario series, unless you count Donkey Kong. Actually, no, I'm not having this discussion. For some reason, Mario Kart clings to being outrageously canonical when adding new characters to the Mario Kart roster, even if it means combing the dregs of the Mario series for fucking babies and references to people no one remembers. Sonic All-Star Racer said fuck that and treated its kart racer with all the reverence Nintendo treats Smash Brothers with. Virtua Fighter characters, House of the Dead characters, Monkey Ball, the idiotic Billy Hatcher, Rio from that game that'll never get a sequel, Jet Grind Radio, Samba de Amigo, Opa Opa, Ooh La La, even fucking Alex Kidd got to be in the game, something nobody had bothered to do in the last 20 years. It's a glorious celebration of Sega's entire legacy, with nods to every esoteric little thing that ever happened in the last 30 years, and by that I especially mean the all-star moves that come with cinematics so long you can't even use them online. While a great game series, Nintendo has never used Mario Kart to celebrate anything other than Mario Kart. And that kind of sucks, but it also makes Sonic All-Star Racing pretty special. 